Well, John, it's great to see you again and yeah. uh, have another Sermon Afterthoughts. It's good to and be here with you, Paul. Yeah, yeah. an update of uh, things that are coming up this week. And this is Holy Week. And uh, it's it hard is. to believe that it's come already and that we're into this time where we reflect upon that uh, finished work of Jesus, uh, his death, but also his resurrection. It's Amen. a great week. Yeah, I, I uh, very much am looking forward to Friday because yeah. of uh, the Good Friday uh, service that is going to be online. Um, I really appreciate how First Baptist uh, doesn't skip over the cross uh, to to just rush to the celebration of the resurrection. That there is something to um, to to really gain from reflecting on the death yeah. and the suffering of Jesus Christ for us. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be a special time on Friday, I think. It, it will, will be for me. It will be. Yeah. Um, we'll be talking more about that in just a few moments, but uh, let's get into uh, the subject uh, of our sermon on Sunday, which I was privileged to be able to preach. Hero to zero. <laughs> Hero to zero, right. That's and, right. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an old title, um, but uh, it's... I think that especially over this past year, uh, I don't know of anyone who hasn't felt like it's been a zero year. And right. uh, so I wanted to give words of encouragement and to make sure that people realize that we're not in this alone. As, as Christians, as, as followers of Christ, um, I think the reality of, of the truth that he never leaves mm. us nor forsakes us uh, needs to be reinforced That's right. in our lives. In our uh, in our fellowship cafe, that was a a, a major theme as well um, that people felt. Uh, one person said, well, "I've really felt like a zero this year," um, yeah. to almost verbatim of what you just said. And so we talked about the difficulty of of COVID and isolation and just just feeling feeling so down, um, but also clinging to that hope. Yeah. Right. Um, that yeah. Jesus has has finished the work. That he's gone before us. He knows what this feels like. Uh, we have a Savior who is close, yeah. and we are not alone in this. Well, especially Jesus' words on the on the cross, um, you know, uh, where where he cries out, uh, "Daddy, you know, why have you why have you left me?" Mm. At that moment, you know, all the sins of the world were upon him, and God, of course, being a holy God, could not look upon that, could not be there. Turned his face away, and so for that that moment of um, Jesus' uh, ultimate sacrifice, uh, you know, he, he knew uh, what it was. And the, and the thing is that I find amazing is, is that he had the foreknowledge of that, that mm. that was going to happen, and yet he still went through with it. it yes. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine the, um, the, the, the severity of that moment. You yeah. know, I, no one can humanly, uh, that the triune God um, had a, you know, the father turned his face away from the yeah. son in that moment for yeah. for the first time ever. Um, how hard that must have been for Jesus. Like you're saying, the foreknowledge of that moment, the, the hugeness of that moment, um, for him to go from sort of a hero to zero in that moment. Yeah. It's a big deal that Jesus did for us. Yeah. But he did it in submission. He did it in surrender. To, to God's will, um, God's will for the whole world, you know. God so loved the world that he gave his son. And um, that's what we remember in this week mm. and in the uh, weekend to come. And uh, it doesn't end, though, with just a death. It, uh, it goes on to show a victorious, living Christ who's a reality for for our lives as Christians. It's only something you can know by faith, folks. And um, we trust that you who are watching this broadcast will uh, have taken that step of asking Jesus Christ to be your Savior so that you can experience this hope we're talking about. That's right. And uh, if you want to know more about that, we'll be talking about that on Sunday morning uh, coming up uh, in a message that uh, I'm titling yep. Life in His Name. Great. So, well, looking forward to that. Um, sort of threw you in the uh, water. 
<laughs> with giving you one of the major Sundays to. Uh, oh yeah, but I, I think I'll be able to swim, yeah, so good. it'll be okay. I know you can. I'm, swim. Uh, I'm excited about it, and, and it's almost like giving, being given the keys to the, to the bins, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's pretty exciting, and, and I, I see it as a very big deal and, and a vote of confidence. I, I appreciate that. I'm excited to, well, to be able to, to give the message on Easter Sunday. It's, it's, uh, doesn't go, go. I don't take that lightly. So <laughs> I appreciate it anyway. Okay. Anyhow, we've yeah. got uh, a week ahead where we've uh, we're able to offer the prayer room or the sanctuary for you to be able to pray in, and I know that mm. this is going out on Tuesday. Uh, but take advantage of the next two days. If you haven't already, just give Allison a call at the office and she'll arrange a time for you to be able to come and to have that time of uh, your own personal reflection yeah. here in the church. And then on Good Friday, it's going to be a different service because it is going to be uh, basically uh, all through uh, technical means that we're going to be able to do this service. Our special speaker is Pastor Rob, and he'll be speaking from his home in Alberta, and uh, we're going to be listening here, and we're going to share communion together, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful what technology is able to, to allow us to do um, that we haven't ventured there before, yeah. and, yet, and yet this has pushed us into it, and and it's of a great benefit for us. Mm -hmm. So um, there's the Good Friday service. And then on Easter Sunday, you've already told us the, uh, the sermon topic. Be lots of special music. Yeah. And, um, you know, with uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry's uh, recent announcement, we were hoping to be able to have a few people in the chapel to be able to experience uh, that, that service and the communion part of that because it's the first Sunday in the month. And uh, we know we, we've got the, um, uh, the responsibility of having to um, see that shut down. But something that is available to us and that we're, we're going to try for the first time uh, for a Sunday is that we're going to be holding a drive-in worship and communion service on Easter Sunday afternoon at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Now you've gone through a drive-in service that we've done with a movie for the youth. So try and 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 sort of set the scene of what it might be like. Sure. Uh, and it, it was funny. I mean, we were in staff meeting yesterday and yeah. planning a whole bunch of things, and then uh, Bonnie Henry's announcement happened at the same time as staff meeting, and so. Uh, 30 minutes in and we're like well we got to adapt and change and so this this uh, drive-in communion service is it was born out of out of trying to adapt and change and do the best with what we have and and so I'm excited that we can do it uh, but what it'll look like folks is is uh, we can have a max of, of 50 cars uh, for for the the service and that includes uh, the volunteers I think we're at to figure out no because uh, they're saying outdoor it's a you can also combine an outdoor service so we're gonna go with those protocols okay, for the outdoor go. service and the people who are That's driving right. in are going That's to. That's right. So Paul knows more about this than I do, actually. <laughs> but uh, we'll have you drive in, and uh, we're planning to to give you, you know, your um, communion. We have they're almost like coffee creamer size yeah. uh, communion uh, elements that are anyway. So you'll drive in, and we'll we'll sort of like going to Tim Hortons in the drive-through. We'll yeah. deliver that to your window. Um, you'll get that, and then we'll have you come in, and you'll park. I think it's six feet apart or two spaces yeah. away from each other. Uh, and then we'll have, um, uh, we'll be letting some worship off the back steps and go through a devotional time and, and together and get to sing in your car and, and uh, see each other at a distance. And, yeah. Um, yeah, to do that on Easter Sunday. And then once we're done, we'll head out the other exit. And Yeah. And if we get more, more demand than just 50, we'll hold another service. That's uh, the plan about um, you know uh, uh, 20 minutes or so after because uh, because you're all self-contained in your cars Clean we don't have to do a big quick. cleanup that's right <laughs> yeah. anyhow we're really looking forward to it we're, we've got a great Easter Sunday planned that's right we hope you folks will be able to uh, participate either 
uh, in your home by viewing or uh, through the drive-in experience. That's right. So again, yes, the Sunday morning, 10 a.m. live stream, that will look uh, just like it does each yeah. week with communion in the service, just like it does on the first Sunday of the month, but then in addition, this two o'clock in the afternoon drive-in. So yeah. yeah, excited to be able to offer all of that for, for everyone, uh, whether you need to stay at home or you can come out and do that with us yeah. too. So. so folks, that's it for this week, but remember, you, you are loved. loved. Goodbye, everyone.